Sometimes all you need in life is the right mentor, and sometimes one positive encounter can change the course of an entire life. In this video, we will break down the movie Good Will Hunting and see how a series of powerful conversations can save someone's life in many different ways. How are you? Where are you from in Southie? I like what you've done with the place. Oh, thanks. Do you buy all these books retail or do you send away for like a shrink kit that comes with all these volumes included? Do you like books? Yeah. Do you read any of these books? I don't know. How about any of these books? Probably not. What about the ones on the top shelf? You read those? Yeah, I read those. Good for you. What do you think about them? Hey, I'm not here for a fucking book report. They're your books. Why don't you read them? I did. I had to. It must have taken you a long time. In the beginning, Will Hunting is somehow forced to visit a, a psychotherapist because of some trouble with the justice system. But he's heavily reluctant and he doesn't want to share anything about his life, so he's showing a lot of resistance. And since he's really smart, he can always pinpoint anything that will trigger the therapist to make them not want to help him at all. The psychologist is trying to pull his attention through some questions, repeated questions, have you seen those books and those ones, just to try to get him to focus a bit more on the moment, because he can definitely see that Will is not paying attention at all and is just somehow focused on his meta frame for these conversations, which is how the hell do I get out of here as fast as possible? So anything he says or makes a comment about uh, in the beginning will be jeered at this outcome. And that is the first thing to really understand as the psychologist or in any type of conversation. Where does that person stand mentally? You paint that? Yeah. You paint? Mm-mm. Do you sculpt? No. Like art? It's a real piece of shit. Oh. Well, tell me what you really think. Oh, I'm just a, the linear and impressionistic mix makes a very muddled composition. It's also a Winslow Homer ripoff, except you got Whitey uh, rowing the boat there. You ever heard the saying, any port in a storm? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that means you. In what way? Well, maybe you're in the middle of a storm, a big fucking storm. Yeah. The maybe. sky's falling on your head, the waves are crashing over your little boat, the oars are about to snap. You're just pissing your pants, you're crying for the harbor, so maybe you do what you gotta do to get out. You know, maybe you became a psychologist. Bingo. That's it. Let me do my job now. You start with me. Come on. Maybe you married the wrong woman. Maybe you should watch your mouth. Well, that's it, isn't it? You married the wrong woman. If you watch the movie, you can see how Will Hunting is always adding a shitload of details, historical details, scientific details, neurological details, anything just to kind of sink the person's head into what he says. But deep down, if we remove all of those specific details, the intent of his communication is really not hard to figure out. In this specific example, based on his meta frame, he wants to get out of the conversation. All the things he says, no matter how complex and elaborated they are, are just geared at the same intent, which is what in your life can I find, figure out and trigger so that you get angry and mad at me, which is an unconscious be a reflex to avoid people getting attached to him because he has been abused as a child, so it makes perfect sense. Following that conversation where Will has being successful in getting mad at the therapist, there is a famous scene taking place on a bench in a park where the psychologist, who has definitely figured out the background and the personality and the defense mechanisms of Will, is going to tell him a lot of truisms, what we may call universal truth, made to break his shell somehow. He's going to tell him that no matter how well thought out all his arguments are, he still learned all of that from books and not 
not from real life experience because he's just a kid. That creates a confusing shock for Will Hunting because probably nobody ever listened to him or tried to figure him out on such a deep level and that confusion is allowing the therapist to get deeper into his mind. Unfortunately, I can't upload the full scene because it has been heavily copyrighted, but a very interesting language pattern you can hear if you watch the full scene is when the therapist is making a reference to what Will said during the first interaction about the painting, explaining, to make it shorter, that the painting was just an imitation of more of brighter painters, brighter artists, and that you painted just because you've married the wrong wife. And the psychologist will brilliantly appeal to that and reply to this attack from Will by using an analogy saying, well, you, Will, you are an orphan. Do you think that I know you just because I have read some novel like Oliver Twist, which talks about an orphan? That is a metaphor, an analogy to make him understand that just because he's very smart and has read a lot of stuff does not mean he can fully understand all the people around him. You're an orphan, right? Do you think I'd know the first thing about how hard your life has been, how you feel, who you are? Because I read Oliver Twist. Does that encapsulate you? And that also appealed to some of his deepest trauma in life because he has been abused when he was growing up. So with the amount of confusion produced by all those pattern interrupts, the mind of Will is much more open from now and can exchange on a more important level. I went on a date last week. How'd it go? It was good. You going out again? I don't know. Why not? I haven't called her. Christ, you're an amateur. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Don't worry about me, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but this girl is like, you know, beautiful. She's smart, she's fun. It's different from most of the girls I've been with. So call her up, Romeo. Why, so I can realize she's not that smart, that she's fucking boring? You know, I mean, you don't, this girl is like fucking perfect right now. I don't want to ruin that. Maybe you're perfect right now. Maybe you don't want to ruin that. But I think that's a super philosophy, Will. That way you can go through your entire life without ever having to really know anybody. Right here, they are talking about the girl that Will have met, and the therapist who knows the background, who knows the backstory, can spot that, again, any sort of deep attachment is difficult for him, and he kind of pulls away from that by justifying it with some extremely elaborate logic. Right here, when the therapist is challenging him with, uh, what, why don't you just call her again, call her back, he says, well, she's perfect right now, what if future outcome, pointing out to a very negative consequence in the future. What if she just gets fucking boring uh, in the future and I'm just bored of her and I want to leave her? Starting to be more aware of all the defense mechanisms of Will, the therapist is pulling his attention to an alternative view about what if it was actually you? who had trouble to invest emotionally and who was afraid to ruin everything. What if you were just seeing yourself in a mirror when you look at her? That is shifting the perspective from, oh, this is other people's fault or the, it is caused by other people to, well, what did you do initially yourself or what did you feel or think initially yourself that tend to produce those negative feelings or those fears about the future. And he's concluding by explaining that he may be doing all of that just to protect himself, that his deeper intention is to just keep everyone away from him emotionally, at least any, any sort of new person that he doesn't already trust, so that he doesn't take any risks of being left alone and abandoned again. My wife used to fart when she was nervous. She had all sorts of wonderful little <laughs> idiosyncrasies. You know, she used to fart in her sleep. <laughs> ah, but Will, she's been dead two years and that's the shit I remember. <laughs> it's wonderful stuff, you know? Little things like that. Yeah, but you're not perfect, sport. And let me save you the suspense. This girl you met, she isn't perfect either. But the question is whether or not you're perfect for each other. That's the whole deal. That's what intimacy is all about. Now, you can know everything in the world, sport, but the only way you're finding out that one is by giving it a shot. 
From there, even if that little story he tells about his wife may seem completely irrelevant, it is actually a very well thought out metaphor, even if that is a true story for him, but that is a well thought out metaphor and analogy right here, because he's explaining, he's giving the perspective that no human being is perfect anyway. So even if Will is scared that she, let's say indeed she is the problem in his map of the world, let's say that indeed she is the problem, maybe she will, won't be perfect, but he still needs to try. And that is his concluding statement by pointing out to the future, which is initially where Will led the conversation to avoid processing his own feelings. He left his own body somehow and jeered his mind at the future to avoid feeling anything, which is a very common strategy uh, to cope out of the negative feelings. And right here the therapist is saying the only way you can find out is uh, by giving it a shot and see what happens in the future, which yes is scary, yes is including the possibility of being abandoned and left alone again, but you still need to try it. You'll never have that kind of relationship in a world where you're always afraid to take the first step because all you see is every negative thing 10 miles down the road. You're going to take the professor's side don't on this? Don't give me a line of shit, no. Look, I didn't want the job. It's not about the job. I don't care if you work for the government. But you can do anything you want. You are bound by nothing. What are you passionate about? What do you want? I mean, the guys who work their entire life laying bricks so their kids have a chance at the opportunities you have here. I didn't ask for this. No. You were born with it, so don't cop out behind. I didn't ask for this. What do you mean cop out? I mean, w w what's wrong with laying brick? Nothing. W there's nothing wrong with it. So that's somebody's home I'm building. Right. My dad laid brick. Okay? Busted his ass so I can have an education. Exactly. That's an honorable profession. What's wrong with, with fixing somebody's car? Someone will get to work the next day because of me. Yeah, there's honor will. in that. Yeah, there is. Well, there is honor in that. And there's honor in, you know, taking that 40-minute train ride so those college kids can come in in the morning and the floors are clean and the wastebaskets are empty. That's real work. That's right. Right. And that's honorable. I'm sure that's why you took that job. I mean, for the honor of it. I just have a little question here. You could be a janitor anywhere. Why did you work at the most prestigious technical college in the whole fucking world? Why did you sneak around at night and finish other people's formulas that only one or two people in the world could do and then lie about it? Because I don't see a lot of honor in that, Will. So what do you really want to do? Finally, they are entering the conversation that is appealing to the bigger issue uh, during the, the plot of this uh, movie, which is what Will Hunting, which, who is a genius, will do with his life because he doesn't really belong to the life he grew up in so far, or at least could we say he has the opportunity to reach so many other things compared to his friends who are much less fortunate. So he is diving into the most uncomfortable question, what do you really want in the end? What is it that you even want? And again, Will is pulling back from processing anything internal by distancing himself from his feelings, by appealing to some superior standards uh, of morality. Like in his map of the world right here, he says, what is wrong with having a labor job or any kind of a degrading job according to some other people? It is honorable to do this and this and that. And that may seem like a clever statement, but like anything else he says, whenever processing difficult emotions are arising, he will, he will appeal to so many deeper logics or uh, so many other statements just to cover up the wounded things he can't process. So again, the therapist, who by now has definitely figured out that giving him the alternative view of making him face his own feelings as in the rearview mirror is extremely effective with him, he says, I don't see a lot of honor to use exactly the same term, the same word he used, which makes him connect the dots with the deeper emotions he usually don't want to process. Uh, he says, I don't see a lot of honor in your current lifestyle choices. I rephrased it, but basically that is what he says. Whenever you use exactly the same words the person used, but turned uh, the meaning of what they said, it makes them reflect much more deeply on what they feel and what they think, because now they are exposed through their own canal of communication to their their 
internal bullshit that they don't want to let out or don't want to process. And if you want to figure out how the movie ends and what happens to Will Hunting, you will have to watch the whole movie if you haven't already done so. I remember I watched this movie when I was a kid, uh, it was uh, on TV. But anyway, great movie and if you want to figure out how to develop those skills, how to be able to lead a conversation so that you help the person to get out of their uh, maybe trauma or anything negative, you have a document down below called The 7 Steps to Master Slide of Mouth, which will help you not only in therapeutic conversations when you want to help others, but also to defend yourself. Because you can see many moments in this movie, Will Hunting is attacking the psychologist in pretty mean ways. You need to be able to defend against that without losing your cool which is a whole field in and of itself. So you can have this document down below if you want. You can download it right away. And I will see you soon in the next breakdown or the next video on the topic. <laughs>